portioning of footing we will be worried about the uh, we will be worried about the dimensions of the footing and also with the main concept or a, with the main background agenda that the using the dimensions whatever you arrive should not should not be exceeding the allowable bearing capacity of the soil okay and one of the basic uh, things on the uh, uh, proportioning of the footing is um, uh, the we survey the size of the footing based on the assumption that the if it is a combined footing we have two columns the two columns carry different loads and when you add the loads you'll get the resultant loads and the resultant load will act at the centroid of the combined footing in case of a combined footing or in case of a combined footing two loads act uh, two column loads will come in a combined footing and the two combined footings or the resultant load will act at the centroid of the footing it will not act at the center of the footing instead it will act at the centroid of the footing centroid is different from center center means just a paadi center la exact act agirad centroid is different In engineering mechanics la you would have find out found out what is centroid centroid of the footing la the load will be acting the total load will be acting and based on this assumption only we will be arriving the dimensions of the footing and this is called or arrange the size of the footing this is called proportioning of the footing proportioning of the footing okay there are certain design requirements for a foundation one always i said that i been telling from the second unit itself your foundation is designed for two important parameters one uh, we should be worried about shear failure that is shear failure depends upon the bearing capacity of the soil so bearing capacity of the soil and the second thing is settlement so we should always the design requirements is one it should be uh, the load should be below the safe bearing capacity of the soil second the foundation should not settle so settlement and safe bearing capacity are the important parameters for design requirements also whenever when we, we design foundations we should be very careful the foundations are not located in loose fill soil what is loose fill soil sometimes the soil in a area will be very unacceptable we cannot uh, go for a, or we cannot construct a foundation at all and when we go for that type of constructions uh, site areas what we will do is we will excavate the soil which is useless and they then they will go for some loose fill materials from other site they will bring some soil from another site and fill the area uh, but in that loose fill soils may not provide it will give away or it will settle very easily so we made up materials may give uh, fail very easily so we should be worried about the foundation not being located at a loose fill material also uh, foundation should be located below the frost x zone it should be below the moist zone in the highly expansive soil we saw all these things in the depth of foundation factors affecting depth of foundation we know that water table ku mala da our foundation should be uh, then uh, frost zones ku keela da the foundation should be we should be careful about it also cover and silting whenever it comes near water table high areas like near a river or near a sea in such areas we should be careful about locating the foundations okay we will be going into the proportioning of combined footing for that you know what is combined footing where it is adapted we know that when two columns come together instead of come very nearby instead of providing tani taniya isolated footing we go for a combined footing when two foundation two isolated footings come together and they overlap with each other it is very uneconomical instead of going for that we can provide a single foundation and that is going to be a 
combined footing that is going to be a combined footing also if one of the column is going to be uh, if the load is going to be eccentric that is one footing will carry heavy load and another footing will be going to carry small load then we can go for combined footing then we can go for combined footing uh, okay so we know this and what are the advantages of providing uh, combined footing it supports two column first advantage second one the it uh, sometimes the foundations are located at the boundary line at the boundary line means there is no projection or there is no cover or no projection beyond the column some columns may come exactly at the boundary line site oda boundary one irukum and the boundary line la exact ah varum some form of columns there will not be extra spaces and this kind of foundations varappo we can go for combined footing i'll explain when uh, in the drawing in the later parts and uh, uh, when two columns come together and two columns carry different loads or one column exit at the center exist at the center and another column at the boundary line there is a huge chances of coming eccentric loads uh, if eccentric loads comes always we know the foundation can tilt because of eccentric load but to inst but when we combine combine two columns such columns in eccentric load coming cases if you combine the two columns no this eccentricity is reduced and thereby the tilting of the foundation is also reduced okay you know that combined footing can be rectangular or it can be trapezoidal okay so first we are going to combine footing la rendu type irukku one rectangular footing inona trapezoidal footing i'll tell what is important in this unit in this unit will be uh, proportioning rectangular combined footing will be proportioning uh, trapezoidal combined footing also will be proportioning uh, strap footing so uh, over combined footing layum plan rectangular line seri trapezoid line seri we'll see two types of problems uh, also in strap also we will see two types of problems okay that is what the focus of this unit is okay first rectangular combined footing i'll explain the please have a note and a pen from this it is very important over now i'll explain the steps ninga eppadi design pandreenga drc la steps procedure paakreenga la after that you use that procedure and follow and uh, arrive the uh, dimensions design pandreenga adhe maadhiri proportioning also have some steps we will we'll go by step by step and the steps olunga memorize pannitinga na it will be very easy for you to solve problems okay so first is design of rectangular combined footing always soil mechanics or foundation we always have assumptions similarly this also have four assumptions sorry three assumptions first assumption is we are going to follow conventional design we are not going to introduce a new method we are going to follow conventional design second we assume the foundation is to be rigid rigid na enna artho rigid footing nale enna artho the settlement is going to be uniform that comes as a background assumption so the foundation is going to be rigid third the soil pressure distribution is planar soil pressure distribution is nothing but contact pressure distribution the contact pressure distribution is going to be planar we are not going to assume it to be three dimensional parameter we are just going to assume it to be a planar then we are going to assume as i said earlier that in combined footings there is resultant loads because two columns two loads when we add it we get the resultant load the resultant load will always act at the centroid of the footing so this four assumptions are very important assumptions based on this assumptions we are going to uh, arrive the procedure for solving or designing the proportional footing you can see the rectangular footing a rectangular footing two columns are there 
ஃபஸ்ட் அவுட்டர் லெஃப்ட் சைடு காலம் இஸ் த எக்ஸ்டீரியர் காலம் அண்ட் த இன்னர் காலம் இஸ் த இன்டீரியர் காலம் அண்ட் யூ கேன் சி த எக்ஸ்டீரியர் காலம் சைஸ் இஸ் வெரி ஸ்மால் அண்ட் யூ கேன் சி த இன்டீரியர் காலம் சைஸ் இஸ் வெரி பிக் ஸோ வென் எவர் யூ எக்ஸிபிட் த இன்டீ அவு எக்ஸ்டீரியர் காலம் தட் இஸ் த லெஃப்ட் சைட் காலம் இஸ் ஆல்வேஸ் த எக்ஸ்டீரியர் காலம் ஸோ த லெஃப்ட் சைட் காலம் இஸ் சைஸ் இஸ் ஸ்மாலர் தென் வி ஆல்வேஸ் கோ ஃபார் ரெக்டாங்குலர் கம்பைன்டு ஃபூட்டிங் ப்ராப்ளம்ஸில் டிசைன் ப்ரப்போஷன் கம்பைன்டு ஃபுட்டிங்னு கொடுத்துருப்பாங்க சம்டைம்ஸ் தே வில் நாட் கிவ் வெதர் இட் இஸ் அ ட்ரெப்பிசாய்டல் ஆர் இஃப் இட் இஸ் அ ரெக்டாங்குலர்னு கொடுக்க மாட்டாங்க அப்போ என்ன பண்ணோன்னா லோடு பார்க்கணும் இஃப் த லோட் ஆஃப் த அவுட்டர் காலம் இஸ் ஸ்மாலர் தேன் த லோட் ஆஃப் த இன்டீரியர் காலம் தென் வி ஆல்வேஸ் கோ ஃபார் ரெக்டாங்குலர் ஃபூட்டிங் எழுதி வச்சுக்கோங்க எங்கேயாச்சு இஃப் த அவுட்டர் காலம் அந்த எக்ஸ்டீரியர் காலம் லோடு இஸ் கிரேட்டர் ஸ்மாலர் தேன் த இன்டீரியர் காலம் தென் இட் இஸ் தென் இட் இஸ் அ ரெக்டாங்குலர் கம்பைன்ட் ஃபூட்டிங் இஃப் ஸோ தட் இஸ் கியூ ஒன் இஸ் ஆல்வேஸ் லெஸ் தென் கியூ டூ இன் அ ரெக்டாங்குலர் கம்பைன்ட் ஃபூட்டிங் ஸோ இஃப் த கியூ ஒன் இஸ் கிரேட்டர் தென் கியூ டூ தென் இட் இஸ் கோயிங் டு பி அ ட்ரெப்பிசாய்டல் கம்பைன்ட் ஃபூட்டிங் தட் யூ ஹாவ் டு ரிமெம்பர் அண்ட் கியூ ஒன் ப்ளஸ் கியூ டூ போட்டிங்கன்னா என்ன கிடைக்கும் டோட்டல் லோட் யூல் கெட் டூ காலம்ஸ் யூல் கெட் த ரெசல்டன் லோட் கேபிட்டல் கியூ அண்ட் வி ஹாவ் அசியூம்டு தட் த டோட்டல் லோட் ஆர் த ரெசல்டன் லோட் வில் ஆக்ட் அட் த சென்ட்ராய்ட் ஆஃப் த ஃபூட்டிங் ஸோ வாட் இஸ் சென்ட்ராய்ட் யூ கேன் சி த டோட்டல் லோட் ஆக்டிங் அட் த சென்டர் பாயிண்ட் அண்ட் ஆர் சென்ட்ராய்டல் டிஸ்டன்ஸ் அண்ட் த சென்ட்ராய்டல் டிஸ்டன்ஸ் இஸ் மெஷர்ட் ஃப்ரம் த அவுட்டர் காலம் யூ கேன் சி தட் எக்ஸ் பார்னு போட்டிருக்கோமா எக்ஸ் பார்னா என்ன டிஸ்டன்ஸ் யூ கேன் சி திஸ் Q1 plus Q2, exterior and interior column, you'll get capital Q. And this capital Q is at a distance of X bar from the center of the exterior column. Exterior column or the center, larindu, the capital load Q is acting at the distance of X bar. X bar is nothing but centroid. Centroid. Centroid of the footing. Then, the x2 another term we will use is x2 the terms la memorize pannikonga to solve the problems x2 what is x2 center to center spacing of the columns interior column exterior column the center to center spacing is x2 and you can see the exterior column la pathinga na it is very out at the boundary line exterior column is at the boundary line there is no projection beyond the exterior column so it is at the boundary line interior column parunga konja extension iruk interior column right side la column taandi konja space is there so that is called projection there is some projection beyond the interior column but the exterior column is exactly at the boundary uh, boundary line okay and you can see the contact pressure down, drawn below the contact pressure is assumed to be uniform uh, contact pressure is assumed to be uniform also settlement is also assumed to be uniform and you can see the allowable contact pressure is q not and the length of the foundation is combined footing is l and this is the elevation which is the front view now we will see the top view which is plan plan of this plan la eppadi theriyum you can see the foundation the combined footing total width of the combined footing is capital b total length of the combined footing is capital l and uh, you can see the size of the columns uh, b1 by b1 and another column size is b2 by b2 this is the top view of the a rectangular combined footing so get used to it so this is the top view you can see the interior column and the exterior column interior column is exactly at the sorry exterior column is exactly at the boundary and the size is smaller and the interior column is uh, at the right side and the size is bigger than the exterior column which is the size is b2 by b2 small b2 by b2 what is capital b total width of the combined footing what is capital l total length of the combined footing remember all these terms we are going to the procedure
so propulsion procedure it's something like a design of a beam beam design pannum bodhu neenga eppadi panduvingalo andha maathiri da foundation design is going to be so first step 1 step 1 la enna pannona neenga partial safety factor nu or factor multiply pannuvinga in drc whenever you take the found loads apdiye loads you won't use instead we will apply a partial safety factor in the loads It's something like we will overestimating the original loads adha we will do in the uh, for the safety aspect we always take the loads will not use the loads as such instead we apply a partial safety factor so that uh, our building is going to be safe so uh, based on that principle here also we won't use the load as such instead we will multiply by factors and that factor is going to be 1.5 here so load q1 abingirathu and exact apdi edukamaatom outer column oda load is taken that is load on the exterior column then q2 load on the interior column okay so given loads and we multiply by 1.5 and you take it as q1 and q2 exterior column oda load eduthe you multiply by 1.5 and that is going to be q1 interior column oda load eduthe you multiply by 1.5 and that is going to be q2 okay step 2 after getting two loads q1 and q2 which are obtained by multiplying the fact par- safety factor which is 1.5 now we get another uh, total load what is going to be total load or resultant load q q1 plus q2 q1 plus q2